Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, or welcome back, I'm Katie and today is a scroller box kind of day. Join me while I unbox and create with April's scroller box. We have as always a gorgeous print and I can pronounce their first name which is Cecilia but I don't think I can attempt their last name but it is beautiful, I love that print, I mean who doesn't like a tiger? We of course also have the scroller zine which has the hints and tips in there telling you about the materials, a fabulous sticker, a candy and of course the main event, all of these gorgeous art supplies. I'm especially liking this month's sticker, don't know why, just like it. So the first thing I'm pulling out of the bag is the Unipin Extra Fine Brush Pen in black and it really is an incredibly fine brush pen with actual bristles on it which I didn't expect, it's a very nice pen. Also included in the box are the Duant Chromaflow pencils and we have six of those, the colours are Basil, Foliage, Golden Sun, Raisin and of course black and white. To sharpen those with we have a Steadlier Metal Double Sharpener and if we make any mistakes we have a Factis P36 eraser and of course our gorgeous surface for this month is an A5 toned drawing paper pad in 115 GSM. I was quite glad actually we had a mid-tone paper for this month's box. Upon swatching out the coloured pencils they do actually stand out quite well even the Golden Sun, which is a similar colour, with enough pressure applied whilst applying the colour, it shows up. It shows up really nicely. Now, obviously opening scroll boxes and just generally this channel, I have used a few coloured pencils here and there, although it's not my main source of medium because it just takes me forever, which is why I tend not to film very many videos of me doing this. I was actually really curious to try these, but they'd sort of not quite creeped onto my radar enough to want to go out and purchase them. They were more of a, I'll wait till they're in the sale kind of purchase, and that's only if I need them. The first thing that struck me about these were they were Katie proof. What does that mean? Well, I'm sure if you've watched a lot of videos of mine, especially the coloured pencil ones, you'll know I can be a little bit heavy handed. Quite frequently there are leads just flying across the table because I've just pushed it down too hard whilst colouring or drawing, it's just how I roll, I can't help it. These however, these seemed invincible to me, honestly there were no crack leads or anything and I was very pleased with that because there's nothing more frustrating than having to keep sharpening a pencil because I've busted up the lead inside it and that's down to just pressing down too hard. So the, these guys are pretty resilient. The sharpener we had as well, I've had the single barrel version and I do think they're a good sharpener. I kind of like the bigger barrel as well because I can just keep it sharp without having to sort of scrape down half the pencil and then realise I haven't got much of a certain colour left. So that was good. And to be fair, the eraser surprised me. I, I didn't expect it to completely remove the colours, but I was actually quite impressed by how much of the colour it removed, especially on the areas where I'd pressed down quite hard. It lifted it, so I'm happy with that. And it didn't mess the paper up underneath. This month's prompt is a walk on the wild side. And I do want to come back to this prompt, so I will follow this up with a beyond the box, but I really want to spend some time just sketching it out properly and having a good planned idea as to what to do. But for the sake of demonstration purposes, I gotta give you something, right? So I thought I would paint, well, paint? I thought I would draw a fox and go through the process a little bit with this rather handsome looking fox right here. I'd very lightly outlined it using the white pencil and I wasn't, well, for me, I wasn't pressing down too hard and I was quite impressed by how I'd got enough there to go off as a reference, nothing was vanishing and nothing was taking over either. I'd used the golden yellow colour to just put a base down for the fox's coat and used that raisin tone to just add in a few areas of different shadows there. What I really liked was actually how 
the raisin and the golden yellow combined really transformed itself from their base colours. It really created this really nice golden yellowy orange colour, which I guess that is what it's made out of. But I, I really liked that. I thought I thought that was really nice. I, I like it when you've got a material that can be quite versatile like that. Some coloured pencils I've used before can blend, but it's literally just a transition, not so much a transformation. But yeah, I, I liked what was going on with these very much. I really like as well the level of depth with that black pencil as well, especially when it was nicely sharpened and you could really, really put the pressure down. I was very happy with it. Again though, using it lightly, there was still enough of the pigment there to apply to the paper. And let me talk about this paper, right? I'm pretty sure it's a recycled paper, which is absolutely fine and I'm all for. Because upon closer inspection, I could just see like a few little metallic -y bits in there and that's obviously from the recycling process where non-paper items have sort of made it in and it's all been pulped up. I liked that, I liked these little imperfections in the paper and the paper itself was actually quite pleasant to draw on. Apart from with this brush pen, for me personally in my opinion I actually thought it was a little bit too toothy to get the most out of that pen. However, I did play about off camera and the other side of the paper is slightly lighter and a lot smoother, so I may experiment a little further with that. But it just seems a shame that the paper couldn't bring out the maximum potential, if you catch what I mean. But hey, I'm not grumbling though, because that's a nice pen. And it's also a nice paper for the pencils. So you see where I'm getting at there. What I also enjoyed about these was that even with a relatively thick layer placed down, especially on the Foxy's forehead, it still didn't stop me from being able to layer it up even more so I could get more of those fur details in and those, I guess, individual strands of fur. Not that I've gone super detailed with this, but it was really nice to be able to do that. And I also enjoyed the fact that when it came to going over it again just to soften those so they didn't look quite so stark. It didn't take away too much of the detail and when I went over it in the golden yellow it sort of enhanced everything and again just brought out those lovely red tones that I wanted to achieve. I was also pretty impressed by that eraser. I know I mentioned it earlier but upon using it on a proper application in a drawing sense it was really good just to soften down the area underneath the fox's jaw so it didn't look like I'd made a mistake, I guess, and it, it removed it. That's all you could want from a, an eraser, really. I'm quite impressed as well that it didn't chew the paper up because with it being quite a thin paper, I was half expecting it to drag, but no, it was pretty good. I mean, there's only so much I can say about an eraser, but the things I have to say were good. I decided not to use the pen for adding the really dark areas. I thought the black coloured pencil could do an adequate job of that, especially since I could sharpen it to the, the point that I wanted. And also, I, I wasn't sure at this point how the ink from that pen would interact over the layer of the coloured pencil. So that was something I had to consider at the time. And as well, because I was still adding layers of fur in there and details, chances are I would have gone over that black line anyway and then had to reapply it and that would have been on top of another layer so you get what I mean there. And of course with these coloured pencils being wax based that's naturally going to repel anything water based so there was there was that to consider. I decided that this piece needed just a bit of a background colour there so I end up going ever so lightly around it using the basil and the foliage. I use the basil first and uh, it, I applied the same principle as I did with the raisin and the golden yellow. I put the darker colour down first and then use the lighter colour or the lighter tone to I guess enhance it and I'm quite happy with it really. I'm, it means as well I also got to use that green pen. I actually would like to do some videos using coloured pencils, but my only issue is they're going to take a long time and they're going to be quite a long video. So I'm going to put it out to you guys that if I did do some videos using these mediums, 
and it took a long time to make and watch, would you sit through and watch it? Let me know down below and maybe I can make that happen. It's one of those mediums that I literally can pick up and put down any time. There's not a huge amount of prep beforehand. It's, it's just the execution of it that takes a while. Anyway, my lovelies, we are all done here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed your scroller box if you've received this one. And I hope, if anything, it's just given you a little bit of inspiration for your own project with it. There should be a couple of videos on screen that I think you're going to love. Maybe a playlist. Why not click on one of them and enjoy having a nice little binge. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!